We're joined with Jim Ashby here at BRFM from the Sheppey Fire Station here on the island. Uh, so, Jim, what winter fire safety tips do you have for us in the home? Yeah, I thought I'd um, just give a few winter fire safety tips. Uh, the weather's turned. Um, I'm sure everybody else, just like me, has uh, turned the heating on over an evening. So just a few ideas and, and tips to keep people safe in the home uh, during the winter. Uh, so we'll start with heaters, perhaps. Um, always position heaters so that the back is against the wall and then they're facing into the room. And if possible, secure them to the wall to prevent them falling over. Um, you can imagine the kind of uh, consequences if you've got a freestanding fire and it falls over onto your rug or against a, a settee. Um, switch off heaters that aren't being used and, and also when you go to bed just double check that the heater's off and that uh, there's nothing around the heater that's uh, going to cause any problems. Portable gas heaters um, are always handy uh, but can cause a problem. Um, make sure cylinders are stored outside and, uh, and the room is well ventilated. The room is well ventilated. Uh, just to you know, ensure you've got some nice fresh air coming into the into the room when you're using portable heaters. Um, both gas and paraffin heaters should only be used in a well ventilated area, as they consume oxygen from the atmosphere and cause um, suffocation in a few um, instances. Uh, so plenty of ventilation is is required when using portable heaters, uh, gas and paraffin heaters. Um, placing your heaters uh, near curtains and furnishings, like I said. Is quite has quite hazardous. Uh, we've attended a few um, incidents where a heat has been too placed to, uh, to 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 some uh, long curtains within the room, um, and before you know it, you've got a bit of a situation on your hands. Um, and drying clothes as well is is a popular one as well. Just consider how you're placing your clothes near any kind of heating source, um, and just keep keep the distance well away. And again, if you're using a freestanding heater just make sure that it's not going to fall over. Chimneys, it's uh, quite, you know, everybody's got um, a fascination by watching a nice uh, open fire burning. Um, and if you're going to use an open fire, then get your, your chimney swept um, before you use it for the first time um, during the winter. If you're burning coal, then you should at least uh, have your chimney swept once a year. Um, and if you're burning logs, then uh, ideally it should be twice. Um, the amount of soot and debris that, burn, that, that um, gathers in the chimneys is, is quite hazardous. And when people say, um, see us going to uh, what we, um, chimney fires, I think, well, surely a, a chimney is designed to withstand um, heat and temperature. Well, it is, but it's the, it's the products that can um, gather within the chimney itself is a problem. Um, they can stick to the chimney uh, and, and actually uh, maintain a fire within that zone. And... Uh, um, the loft, uh, loft uh, um, can tie into a chimney, the floorboards can tie into a chimney and before you know it those floorboards in your loft can be involved in fire as well which is why it's a bit of a hazard. So ensure that you get your chimney swept uh, at least once a year and always use a, a fire guard as well. Um, place that in front of your burning fire just to stop any embers uh, flying out onto the uh, carpet or your nice rug that's in front of the fire. Extinguish the fire before you go to bed, that's an obvious one, or leaving the house. So again, just make sure that you've uh, extinguished all the products within within the, um, the chimney area and the hearth. And never use petrol or paraffin to light your fire. Always use, um, uh, make sure that uh, you're using the uh, suitable products to, to start your fire. Um, domestic fire lighters, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Um, rather than using petrol and paraffin, that's a big no-no. Um, electric blankets is um, it's quite uh, unusual. People do still electric, uh, still use electric blankets, um, especially the elderly. So if you're vi visiting um, um, any of your elderly um, relatives and they're using an electric blanket, just a few things to look out for. Uh, make sure there's no scorch marks or exposed elements within the blanket itself. Um, if there is, well, then it should be disposed of. And always... Um, Make sure that the uh, blankets are designed to switch off, to, to be left switched on rather, uh, whilst under being used underneath uh, any other blankets. Um, if your blankets are several years old, it, again you should be looking at the condition of the uh, excuse me 
of the blanket and always uh, nowadays if you're buying a new blanket ensure that it's got a overheat protection which will cut off the electricity if it becomes too hot um, ideally you should be buying an electric blanket that has a British uh, standard kite mark that's uh, pretty obvious and when you've uh, finished using your blanket don't, don't fold the blankets themselves um, the wiring in, in the blanket uh, can become damaged and cause um, a problem so always store them flat or rolled up rather than folding the blanket don't leave an bl electric blanket switched on all the night um, unless, it is, unless it is thermostatically controlled um, in which case it's safe to do so but just use it for a couple of hours of an evening before you, you um, go to bed and never use uh, hot water bottles in the same bed as an electric blanket even if the blanket is switched off um, it's, it's good practice not to use um, uh, uh, a hot water bottle with an electric blanket at the same time uh, just finally um, one thing that I harp on quite a lot about is uh, candles um, this time of year people tend to um, light candles just to uh, um, add to the atmosphere of an evening uh, once the heating's on maybe a few candles are lit just to um, you know add to the atmosphere so always make sure that you uh, make, um, extinguish candles before you go to sleep and make sure the candle is standing upright and, and uh, is straight and fixed in a firm object or a proper holder um, that's suit, suitable to contain the candle. Um, always place candles on a non on a heat resistant surface. Uh, night lights and tea lights can melt uh, plastic surfaces quite readily, and, and the big one um, that we always have to deal with at some point during the year is uh, candles on top of televisions. Um, so that's the big no-no. Um, tea lights on top of televisions is uh, one thing that keeps us busy so uh, just bear that in mind as well um, keep candles out of drafts, blowing curtains and heat sources uh, for obvious reasons uh, try and keep them at least four inches away from um, any other surfaces and um, burn candles well out of reach of children of course and pets we don't want them knocking over uh, your, your, your candles and causing a problem uh, what else can we tell you? Um, consider an extra smoke alarm in rooms so that you may uh, uh, use candles, and I'll be talking about smoke alarms later on in the interview. Uh, don't lean across candles, there's a good one. Uh, again, um, quite often we, we hear of people leaning across candles, and before you know it, they've caught their clothes alight. Um, so, just a bit of common sense around the home um, during the winter period, just to keep yourselves and your family uh, safe. Uh, I'll be giving you some information uh, shortly on how you can get some free advice in the home from your local fire crew and uh, also to obtain some um, some free smoke alarms as well. We are joined with Jim Ashby from the Sheppey Fire Station here on the Isle of Sheppey here at the Monday Night Community Show. <laughs> 